Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're gonna take a look at another problem on calculating a derivative where we combine the quotient rule and the chain rule. Let's always start by taking a look at our function so that way we can determine which differentiation rules we're gonna apply. So first, we have a composite. We have a function raised to a power. That's where we're gonna apply the chain rule. But when we differentiate the inside, because it's a fraction, that's where we'll use the quotient rule. Now, to speed up our calculations, when we apply the chain rule here, we're gonna use the special case for the chain rule that I call the general power rule. If you're not familiar with that, I have that link down below in the description, so check that out. And what the general power rule says is when we have a function raised to a power, we can calculate its derivative. We bring the power down, keep the inside the same, and then subtract one from that power, and then we multiply by the derivative of the inside because we're applying the chain rule here. So let's go ahead and start by implementing that, the general power rule. So to calculate y prime, first we're gonna bring down our power of seven. We're gonna keep the inside the same, x minus one divided by two x plus one. We subtract one from the power there. The outer power is now gonna be six. And now we multiply by the derivative of the inside, and that's where we're gonna apply the quotient rule. So let's go ahead and denote our inner function as g of x. So that'll be the fraction there, x minus one, divided by two x plus one. All right, and we're gonna calculate the derivative here of g using the quotient rule. Now at this point in your calculus one course, for a simple function like this, you're probably okay calculating the derivative with the quotient rule as you go. And let's go ahead and do that here to calculate g prime. All right, so let's think about what the quotient rule says. We take the numerator and differentiate that. The derivative of our numerator there is gonna be one. That multiplies your denominator 2x plus 1, and then we subtract the numerator, x minus 1, multiplied by the derivative of the denominator. That's g prime. There, that works out to 2. All right, and that's going to be all over the denominator here squared. So 2x plus 1 squared. All right, we can try to simplify this a little bit. Just be careful here. We can rewrite that first part. We don't need the multiplication by one. Just write that as two X plus one. And I'm gonna to try to do a few steps here together. That two, we can distribute it, but be careful. You have a subtraction sign. That's gonna change all the signs thereafter. So when we distribute, we get minus two X, but just be careful here, we have minus a negative, that's gonna be plus, the two multiplies in, we get plus two. And that's all over two x plus one squared. And notice we can simplify this, the two x's subtract out. Be careful here, two x plus one, that's not a common factor in the numerator, so that's not gonna cancel with two x plus one in the denominator. So we're just gonna subtract those out and it looks like what we're left with for our numerator, one plus two, that'll be three. So we get three divided by two x plus one squared. And that is g prime, that's the derivative of our inner function. And we just need to now multiply that here. That was where we were again implementing the chain rule in the version, the general power rule, now we just multiply by g prime, which we have right there. So three divided by two x plus one squared. And that's basically it. Now here we can simplify this considerably. Notice we have seven times three. We can write that as 21, but notice we have the same terms in the denominator there 2x plus 1, 
but that's inside a sixth power. And then we have 2x plus 1 inside a second power. So let's go ahead and start by applying some basic properties of exponents. We'll keep the 7 out front. And I'm going to take the sixth power of the numerator and denominator. So we'll write this as x minus 1 to the sixth power and then divide it by 2x plus 1 to the sixth power. And we're going to keep g prime there that we just calculated with the quotient rule the same. So 3 and then divided by 2x plus 1 squared. Now the benefit of splitting this sixth power up is now when we multiply those denominators, you can add their exponents. And if we go ahead and simplify this, just take your factors, 7 times x minus 1 to the sixth times 3, that's all in the numerator, we can write that as 21 times x minus 1 to the 6th power. And here, because we're multiplying the same quantities, the same base, 2x plus 1, we just add those powers, and we can write this denominator as 2x plus 1 all to the 8th power. And that is it. That is our derivative here. And it's simplified as far as we can take it. Hope you enjoyed this problem where we combined the chain rule, and again, we use that in the version, the general power rule, with the quotient rule. Hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, support the channel, like, and subscribe.